Today's edition of NFL Daily is made possible by Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping on all of their top-of-the-line men's grooming products, including the new Boxers 2.0 and the Lawn Mower 4.0, when you head over to manscaped.com slash chat. It has been a while since we've done, at least I've done, an NFL Daily video, and I figured the perfect way to return as we get closer to the actual season is with a 2023 NFL Mock Draft here for Mock Draft Monday. The order, before y'all get pissy with me, is based on reverse Super Bowl odds and then tiebreakers of odds to make the playoffs, so don't blame me. Number one, Houston Texans. I am not out on Davis Mills, but if you have the number one overall pick, probably means he didn't play quite well enough. And both C.J. Stroud and the guy we'll get to in a second are very high-end quarterback prospects. Stroud made some unbelievable throws on film for Ohio State, although he does benefit from a premier supporting cast around him. But he's got fantastic size, arm strength, and is a great pocket passer. He's not near the runner that, say, Justin Fields was from Ohio State. Pick number two is the Falcons, and they go Bryce Young. This battle between the two quarterbacks, Young, Stroud, Stroud and Young, maybe some interjection from other quarterbacks we'll get to later on, is going to be one of the number one storylines this year in college football for the Heisman Trophy and for the number one pick in the NFL draft. Young does not have great size. I think he is under six foot. NFL teams have him on file, 5'11 and some change, 197. I wish he had C.J. Young's size. Young makes it look effortless. There are so many throws of him not setting his footwork or his feet properly and dropping dimes despite that. Both these guys have immense talent as quarterback prospects. So as we sit right now, who is your quarterback one? I don't think there's a wrong answer. Both these guys are awesome. B.Y. for Bryce Young or C.J. for C.J. Stroud? Let me know who you would rather have in the comment section. All right, Will Anderson will go a bit quicker here now. Number three to the Jets. Hopefully Zach Wilson plays better and uh, insert uh, mom's joke here. Will Anderson could have been their one overall pick. He was awesome last year for Alabama. Had he been draft eligible last year, he would have gone number one over Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson. Number four is Will Levis, and I don't, I don't love this. Um, I think he's got to take some major step forward uh, in terms of his, his play at Kentucky. But the traits that teams covet, the size, the mobility, the, the rocket for an arm, all of those things are there. And I like to do my mock drafts based not on what I would do, but what I think teams would do, what I think the, the mindset is around the NFL to give you a more accurate view. And I think that's they are very high on Levis despite my own concerns. Now, if you want more NFL draft coverage, oh, have you come to the right spot. But I got to show the bosses that you care about it in the regular season, in the preseason. Show you want more NFL draft coverage by sharing this video. You can tweet it, put it on Facebook, send it to a friend via text. Just click the share button and send it right now. Number five, Jalen Carter at Georgia. I know his numbers don't stand out. The film does. He was a Maybe Georgia's best player last year. Uh, maybe Adam Anderson, before he got suspended, could qualify there too. But he's going to be a menace up front. Another quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, number six out of Miami. I was very impressed by him uh, with the Hurricanes last year when he took over as the full-time guy. I need to see a little bit more consistency. He's kind of got a weird motion too. But keep an eye on the Hurricanes surprising and making some noise. And the quarterback, if that's true, will get the buzz as a result. Now, how many quarterbacks do you think will be drafted in round one? I've got five. There's one more coming up in a little bit, but this is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes on YouTube, take advantage of it and make your early predictions at the pinned comment. Number seven, Jackson Smith and Jigba out of Ohio State. The Bears need to give Justin Fields more talent at receiver. Nikhil Harry and the rest of the castoffs do not get it done. And Smith and Jigba is not a burner, but he's an awesome route runner with going to have incredible production this year. Miles Murphy, built in a lab for Clemson, goes to the Carolina Panthers here at number eight, giving them another edge rusher just in case, you know, Yatur Gross Matos doesn't take the step forward for the Panthers there at number eight. I did not have another quarterback in the top ten, so Carolina and the Giants went elsewhere because I didn't want to force anybody else too much too early. Uh, at a non-premium position, Michael Meyer is awesome. The Notre Dame offense was at its best when they ran the throw-it-to-the-tight-end play. 
They should do that again this year. Uh, he is He's going to be in a very, very high draft pick at a spot where there aren't that many of them positionally. The early returns on this offensive line class is eh, not great. One of the better ones is Peter Skoronsky at a Northwestern, and much like Rashawn Slater, we'll have people dinging him because arm length. He might be a guard for some. I think he can play tackle, and he's another good Northwestern offensive lineman. The Steelers go with Keely Ringo out of Georgia, number 11. I am worried about the Steelers' cornerback room. I don't really have a true number one. Ringo, part of a, guess what, guys? The third defense is going to be good again this year. Grouping is on track towards being a potential first-round pick. Today's show is made possible by our friends over at Manscaped. 20% off and free shipping on all their products, including the Lawnmower 4.0. Have some more success off the field by using the Lawnmower 4.0. Nobody wants a bunch of unkempt hair downstairs, and when you trim it up properly, it looks a little bit bitter, bigger. And after all, football and other things are a game of inches. Manscaped.com slash chat will get you 20% off and free shipping. Lawnmower 4.0, their special collection packages, and the Boxers 2.0, the most comfortable boxers known to mankind. Number 12, Eli Ricks. This is an LSU to Bama transfer here, by the way. Has some off-the-field issues he ran into this year. I think he's going to be alongside Ringo in a battle for cornerback one. There could be some other guys who emerge, of course, by the way. Ricks has talent. He should emerge for a Bama team that is investing more than ever in the transfer portal. Nolan Smith, number 13. This pick, by the way, via the New Orleans Saints. Eagles get another edge rusher. I am very curious to see how Smith fares with more playing time uh, with some losses on that Georgia defense. Part of a, I think, pretty promising edge rusher group. That also includes Isaiah Foskey, the Notre Dame edge rusher who played quite well this past year for the Fighting Irish. Minnesota's going to run a 3-4 scheme. I think Foskey will fit. And I will make note, Daniel Hunter could be on his way out after this year. One of my favorite prospects is Antonio Johnson, who I do not see getting a lot of major national buzz so far. I think he's a stud, and I think the NFL feels in a similar fashion. Kind of that, that overhang, safety, nickel corner hybrid role. Basically, think Jonathan Abram, but can cover and isn't going to get hurt and get flagged all the time. He is exactly what the Raiders don't have at that safety position. I think he's a stud for what's going to be a very good Texas A&M team this year. So who is your favorite draft pre draft prospect way too early edition for 2023? No wrong answers. It's just your opinion. It's just your favorite guy. Let me know in the comment section. Paris Johnson next up here. Going to go from guard to tackle for the Ohio State Buckeyes. After Johnson and Skaronski, and even Johnson's got some major pro uh, projection, the obvious offensive line candidates for early draft prospects, haven't really, have, haven't really emerged quite yet. Let's go to Tennessee, number 17 overall, Kayshawn Boutte. And man, I wish he would pronounce his name Booty, but it's fine, I guess, in the end. Dynamic player who could absolutely be the first receiver taken. A Boutte burks d d uh, double B combo, the killer Bs for Tennessee, would be quite fun. Bijan Robinson to the Eagles at number 18. Now, in general, Running backs don't go early. Robinson, despite battling some injuries last year, every time he's out there, it is very clear he is a special player. Positional value will drive him down, but you can absolutely make an argument he's a top 10 or higher prospect as we sit in July. Cam Smith out of South Carolina to the Arizona Cardinals now at number 19. They need more quarterback help. And I think Smith is the next in a pretty solid overall recent track record of South Carolina DBs. Brian Bruzzi is next up. The Houston Texans here. This pick via the Cleveland Browns. Again, their odds still have dropped as of late. I wonder why. Uh, Bruzzi, I will make note, very highly touted prospect. Has not yet put it together on the field. So this is a projection pick, but I know the NFL is high on him, as we saw with some of the uh, the leaked uh, uh, NFS uh, scouting uh, info, which, you know, they don't like it when that stuff gets out. So I'll just tease that it was fairly high up there. 
Now, if you want more NFL videos, you've come to the right spot. I know NBA free agency has been so dominant for obvious reasons, but we still do NFL coverage for you. And with the preseason just around the corner, we're going to come back with a vengeance in the near future. Hit that big red button and subscribe right now. Number 21, Tanner McKee. And I don't, I don't love him. Um, I also didn't love Davis Mills, and that might be an oopsie for me. McKee's got a lot of high praise from those connected and in the know around the NFL. Needs to be better, but I think Indy's a good fit for him where they can have Matt Ryan, bring him back for a year if they need to with Ryan, and McKee can play a similar style of quarterbacking. So I did not put Anthony Richardson in here. More on him later, but I know McKee's got his fans within the NFL. Noah Sewell, linebacker from Oregon, slides to 22 because of positional value, but Panay's brother is going to be awesome. Oh, by the way, a linebacking core of hybrid edge linebacker Micah Parsons, Sewell, and Jabril Cox, if he hits, is awesome in Dallas. Here's Jordan Addison as the receivers overall kind of just fell due to needs and whatnot for me. He goes to the Ravens. I think Addison can play from the slot in the NFL or on the outside. He's now with the Trojans, and he is going to ball out production-wise with Lincoln Riley and not draft eligible quarterback Caleb Williams. All right, Eric Gilbert, the tight end, might get some receiver run uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Again, this is, this is projection. The talent unquestionably is there, but he's battled some injuries, not playing. He already transferred once. If he gets out there... Imagine Gilbert at tight end with T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, and Jamar Chase for at least a year until the money starts to have issues in Cincinnati. That is a dynamic offense. You, you, you lose C.J. Uzama, and you see how Hayden Hurst plays, but Gilbert at tight end? Oh, my God, that offense is so incredible. I have a fun little game now for you guys. I want you to shout out your favorite college team, and I will reply to it with my favorite prospect on the team, or maybe prospect. So, Head down to the comment section, drop your favorite CFB team, and I'll mention a prospect or more that I like on that squad. Number 25, the Miami Dolphins. This pick via the 49ers, Jaqueline, or yeah, excuse me, Jaqueline Roy, the DT for LSU. We'll see how Christian Wilkins and Raekwon Davis and others fare on the defensive line. Adding another premier potential impact player up front makes a lot of sense. All right, Henry Toho Toho out of Alabama, the former Tennessee volunteer transfer again. Bama has loaded up in the transfer portal of late. Seattle's got Jordan Brooks and kind of nothing there. So you spend a first-round pick on your QB. I kind of like what most of the supporting cast is on offense. Beyond that, let's get an impact linebacker to fill out Seattle's roster. Broderick Jones, this is pro this is projection. Didn't play a ton in his career so far for Georgia, but has the traits and athletic ability and the pedigree that teams like, and the Chargers need a right tackle pretty badly. Deadass Andre Carter from Army. Yeah, Army out here. I, I am serious on that front. He is a top prospect. Not often we talk about one of the military schools having a potential first-round pick, but Carter absolutely is one. Fantastic size, 6'7", 265. Great production for the Black Knights. I like Andre Carter a lot, and I would not rule him out as a round one pick. One of my favorite guys is Quinton Johnston. Uh, I don't think he has quite the same contested catch production, but you can blame the quarterback play for that. I get... Kind of skinny Des Bryant vibes out of him. TCU's number one receiver. Lions, if you don't retain DJ Shark, imagine a grouping of Jamison Williams, Quinton Johnston, and Amon Ross St. Brown. That's dynamic. One of my favorite transfers this year that ended up at Bama, of the many, is Jameer Gibbs. And you might not know the name unless you're into college football fantasy or just a huge nerd, which I love you. Welcome to Chat Sports. Happy to have you. Gibbs was good at Georgia Tech and held back by a terrible offensive line. I think he is going to be incredible this year for the Crimson Tide. So, so projection, yes. Two running backs in the first round is surprising. I think Gibbs has all the talent in the world. Joey Porter Jr. Yes, that is the son of Joey Porter. He's got a lot of hype around him, maybe in part because of the name. I don't know if he really should be a first-round pick, but I like having the, the addition of... Uh, corners late. The Bucks need one. And the, the praise for Joey Porter, I, I do think, uh, should be considered with how the NFL views him. 
All right, I think I'm pronouncing this one correctly. Uh, Siaki Ika out of Baylor, who's a big boy, a mauler up front. The Bills, we'll see what they do with Ed Oliver. If they win the title, it means things went pretty well. They actually don't have that many needs. They've built that team oh so well. But Iaka, I think, could be a great run stopper up front and offer you just enough pass protection. Or excuse me, Ika. I'm going to mispronounce last name. Uh, to make it worthwhile in the end. Now, I know I left out players on this mock draft. I can't, I can only fit 32. That's how it works, right? So let me know in the comment section a prospect you think I'm overlooking. Let me know right now. I'll actually mention some names, just a quick five on offense, five on defense. Anthony Richardson has immense talent. I, I just can't get on board with a guy who's thrown like, what, 65 passes, whatever the number is. Like, I know he's got talent. I just need to see it at least a little bit more than 66. Excuse me, it was 66 career, 64 last year. Split the difference. I just need to see the talent come through a little bit more consistently than a handful of snaps last year for Florida. Jermaine Burton, Georgia transfer uh, to Alabama now. Excuse me, that's actually, I mislabeled that. He's at Bama now. He's going to play great for the Crimson Tide. Josh Downs for North Carolina was the only good receiver, I thought, for UNC last year. Zion Nelson could take a Charles Cross-type leap this year in terms of taking athletic traits to production. Andrew Voorhees, elite name and has fared well in a longish career for USC. Defensively, I like Jervin Dexter a lot. He's my typical style of defensive lineman. Need to step forward. One of the best names in this year's draft, FAU is the nickname for for Felix and UDK Uzama, the edge rusher from Kansas State. He's awesome. So is BJ Ojolari. That's Aziz's younger brother at LSU. Don't over don't sleep by the way on Utah corner Clark Phillips the third. He had a great year for the Utes. And Jalen Catalan, one of several good safeties. You can even throw in Brandon Joseph and insert Bama safety here for the 2023 NFL draft.